going on, guys? We are on a train to start off, the skunk train, the skunk train. in Fort Bragg, and I'm here with Robert. Robert, this is the first for me. <laughs> well, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, thank you so much. Give us a little bit of the history of the skunk train here in Fort Bragg. Sure. We were founded in 1885 as a logging railroad, and uh, C.R. Johnson, who was the founder, felt that the best way to move timber from the forest back to his sawmill, which was here on the uh, Pacific Coast, was via this train. Shortly after he started the railroad, he people realized that the only way to get to and from the remote wilderness area was by train. We've been hauling passengers on this train through the Redwoods for 133 years now. Wow. And, and obviously we're just now coming to trees, but we went through a little part of the Fort Bragg there. That's right. <laughs> we depart from downtown Fort Bragg, and once we, um, five crossings to get out of town, once we get out of town, um, we're immediately in the wilderness, and uh, we're traveling out of Fort Bragg along some of the first tracks that were laid down back in 1885. How long have you been a part of this? This is my 26th season. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I start, it was a high school job. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and now you are the chief skunk. The chief skunk. <laughs> I, I like to ask what that means, but... Uh... <laughs> they do everything else that the other skunks don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, I I'm sure people that are watching are probably curious, why do you call it the skunk train or do I want to know? So back in 1925, <laughs> we acquired a single unit self-propelled rail car. It had gas-powered engines, pot-bellied stoves, and the combination of the fumes created a very pungent odor. <laughs> the old timers said that these little buses were like skunks. You could always smell them before you could see them. It's the same year that our mascot was born, which is, was 1925. <laughs> 1925. Yeah. Do we have a name for the mascot? Mr. Skunk. Mr. Skunk. All right. So we're, what are we standing on right here? So this is one of our open air cars. Um, this car was originally built to transport tanks in the US military. Basically put the sidewalls up and a brand new redwood floor <laughs> and, um, and the railings so that people could come out here. The skunk train back in the 19, late 60s, early 70s was the first railroad to really pioneer, um, first tourist railroad, if you will, to really pioneer uh, open aired observation cars. No walls, no roofs, no obstructions between you and nature. It's incredible because you're, you're so many things you said. I'm like, I've never been on a train that's open. Right. All right. I've been on several trains before. And to be on a train that's open in this type of atmosphere has to be extremely rare. It is extremely rare. You know, um, there are no there are no obstructions between a guest stepping on board our train and nature. Um, and we want people to, you, you, the only way you can see the redwoods is you have to s look straight up. Sure. You know, it's the tallest living species known to man. They grow in excess of 300 feet and you can't very well see them if you're sitting inside, you know, looking out a window. Yeah. You can see parts of them and they're, they're beautiful. But this gives our passengers the opportunity to come outside, breathe in the pristine mountain air, and, you know, look straight up <laughs> to see, you know, towering redwood trees. The railroad is still a common carrier railroad. We were built to serve our community. Um, we are a public utility, um, and we will haul freight if the need uh, is there or when the need is there. Um, okay. and, uh, but right now, we're not hauling lumber products, per se. Sure. So hauling people. Hauling people. <laughs> hauling us. So can we go in one of the cars? Absolutely, let's I... go. How long of a trip can people go on here on the skunk train? So we have two different trips that we offer. We have a short trip, which we're offering right now out of Fort Bragg called the Pudding Creek Express. It's a short one hour trip. It's a seven mile round trip down along the Pudding Creek Estuary and back. Uh, then we have a much longer trip out of Willits. Uh, that is from Willits down to the midpoint of the railroad known as North Spur and back. And that's a four hour, 40 mile wow. round trip. We walked in and I noticed some of the chairs are backwards and forward. Can you, so it's a quick change. So it's a quick change. These are, oh. what, these are what in the railroading industry are called walkover seats. Yeah. And um, it makes it so that if there's more than two people in your party or it's a day that there's uh, more space on the train and you want a little bit more leg room, you've got more leg room. Nice, that is so cool. Or you can ride backwards to see where you've been. <laughs> The first time you rode this train, how old were you? Three years old. Three years old. Yeah. Wow. It was, uh, you know, growing up here in Northern California, it's sort of a rite of passage. Um, what do you do in the summertime? You take a trip on the skunk train. I was three years old, my brother was two years old, 
And from that point on, I was hooked. It's, it's so interesting today to step outside of my office and see passengers boarding the train, get the opportunity to visit with passengers boarding the train. And in many cases, year in and year out, it's families coming back, bringing their kids, bringing their grandkids, and in some cases, bringing their great grandkids. Oh, wow. The generational experience that the skunk has become for so many Californians. This is, uh, this is cool. It's the first time I've ever started an interview, and we're going through the interview while we're moving. And are we coming to a stop here? I feel like we're slowing down even more. No, not yet. No. Okay. You said you have a treat for us coming up here. I'm, I'm curious, and I wonder what's, what's happening. Well, they didn't tell you? No, who's you're, they? You're, you're going to be the engineer. Oh, I'm going to be the engineer. We need someone to run this train. Dreams continue to come true. That's all I have to say. I brought my hat. It's not an engineer hat, but I'm, I'm ready to go. Shall we go? Let's go. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? This is our throttle. Uh-huh. Right OK. You can hear it rev up. Yeah. You have to rev it up quite a bit in order to get to start going, huh? Where's the steering wheel? No Where's the pedals wheel. for the brake and the gas? No it's all right here. Wheel. No steering wheel, huh? The, the, this is the brakes for the for the coaches. Just like this. Oh wow. This will apply the coach brakes. This applies the locomotive brakes. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is already. I'm overwhelmed. Gotta have three hands almost. The, no kidding. Yeah. And what about what's this one right for right there? Uh, this is for going in dynamic braking. Where is the horn? Right there. Okay. It. Yeah. Give it a that's what I'm talking about. Ring the bell. Oh, we got the bell. Yeah. Pull We're, out on a bell. Pull this out. All right. Out. Yeah. Okay. So what am I doing now? The horn. What am I doing with these now? Well, you go to a crossing. You want to blow two times. Long. Two long ones. Uh huh. A short one and a long one. <laughs> And we're not at a crossing. So. Fantastic. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. We have photographic proof at this moment that I'm operating the uh, train, right? Yeah, you can notch it up one. Notch it up one. So I, I'm going this way. Yeah, you're at two, two right now. There's three. Oh my goodness. <laughs> my heart's beating a little bit. I'm nervous. I don't know why. Sending back and back. Back and back down. down. Yeah, okay. Back, down. back to back down. Just tell me when. Now back off the throttle. All right, back off the throttle to idle or no? All the way down to idle. All right, all the way to idle. There you go. Whoa! Well, <laughs> you're there. Daryl, awesome. come on. That was awesome. Wait, wait, one more, one more. We lost the train. Lost the train. See what happens when you can't run a train very well? They kick you off. <laughs> We're off. Now, what in the world is this? These are rail bikes. This is your next adventure. So <laughs> now you're going to actually have to work. Oh, my goodness. Wait a minute. I drove the thing, all right? This is, I drove. I was the engineer. You For a moment. <laughs> we have the entire length of it on camera, OK? So it's not just a moment. But what in the world? Rail so, bikes. Rail bikes. We built these ourselves. And um, they're meant for people to come out and have a good time, uh, go pedaling, um, and enjoy, you know, the beauty of the skunk route in a different fashion. So this is a one-way track, I assume, all, as all tracks are. And the train's got, oh, there we go. Train's on the other way. There we go. Keep pedaling. Keep pedaling. Come on now. The skunk train and rail bikes, Fort Bragg, California. Woohoo! You gotta go, go, go!